So we're now able to upload images into storage, but we haven't made the link yet to storing those image URLs into Firestore. So that's what I want to do with you right now. So if we open up Android Studio, here's where we left the to-do for given this game name and the set of image URLs, we now want to talk to Firestore. The way we do this is reference the DB object that we have defined above. And we're going to put this data into a document. Firestore organizes its data into collections and documents. So all documents have to live in a collection and one document represents one entity in our database. So each memory game will be one document and that document is going to live in a collection, which we're going to call games. Inside of games will be a list of all the custom games that people around the world have created. And the parameter here is the path of the document, which is basically the, the name of this document, and it'll be game name. And here we're going to set the data associated with this game. And it'll be very simple. All we really want to do is associate the image URLs to a key called images. So images maps to image URLs. That is the data that we're going to put inside the document. Now let's get notified when this operation succeeds. Add on complete listener and the parameter of this Lambda function will be a game creation task, which indicates if this succeeded or failed. So if it didn't succeed, game creation task is successful. Then let's log an error here. And if this happens, um, we'll return early. All right, otherwise, we have succeeded. So we can say successfully created game, game name. And then in this scenario, let's show a, an alert dialog to the user to communicate to them that they've made the game and let's navigate back now to the main activity and play the game that they just created. The user is only going to have one option on this alert dialog, which is to tap on the OK button. And when they tap on the OK button, we want to pass back to the main activity the game name which has been created. So I'm going to create an empty intent here. And inside of this intent, we are going to pass the game name. So I'll say put extra, extra game name, pass in the game name, and then we'll say set result activity, result okay, and result data. And then finally, once we've set that data properly, we'll call finish. And we're going to show this alert dialog. So we should define extra game name and this will be defined inside of the constants file. Let's import it. Awesome. So let's try this now. If we wrote our code correctly, that means now we should not only upload images to Firebase storage, but also to Firestore. Let's grab a couple images here. Okay, so I added four. And let's say test two. And tap on save. Okay, so after a couple seconds, we can see that we got this dialog pop up which says upload complete. Let's play your game test two. So that seems promising. Let's see if it actually worked inside of Firestore. So I go back to Firestore. Let's refresh this page. And hopefully we should see a new collection called games now. Yes, and we do. The document name is test2, which is the same as the game name. And inside of the document is exactly one field called images. And images is an array of strings. And each string represents the URL for the image. So for example, I could copy this URL, open it up, and we see one of the images that were uploaded. Awesome, this looks great. So there's a couple of things I want to improve on here. First, you might notice that in Save Data to Firebase, we are grabbing the custom game name based on the edit text. 
and we are unconditionally creating a new game with this data. However, if another user in the world has already created a game called test two or testing or whatever it might be, then we're gonna override that data, right? So we're gonna go into Firestore and when we call dot set, all the previous data that was inside of that document, if there was a previous document, that will be overridden. And so what we actually want to do here is check if there already exists a Firestore document with this game, with this game name. So right here, the intention of the code that we're going to write is to make a check on Firestore and ensure that we're not overriding someone else's data. So the consequence of this logic is that once I create a game of a certain name, for example, ABC, no one else in the world can create a game with that same name, ABC. And that seems like a reasonable decision to make. So here, what we want to do is, is call db.collection. We want to target the same collection games and check, do we have a document with this game name? Let's get it. And that'll be how we figure out whether there is a game or not. So the result of this asynchronous operation in this callback is we get a document and now we should just check if the document is null. And if the, if the document is not null and the data of the document is not null, a game with this name already exists in our database. And so we should not allow the user to create another game with this name. So I'll say alert dialog dot builder set title to be name taken set message set positive button okay null dot show right, otherwise we want to then execute all of this logic that we had from before so I'm going to actually put all that logic into a separate function called handle image uploading So let's create a function here and then let's move the parameter can be called game name and let's move all of this logic into that function. And we, we renamed this parameter to be just game name. Awesome. So we added an on success listener. We should also add a failure listener in case for whatever reason, we were not able to retrieve this document. I don't really want to do anything too meaningful here. Just log an error so we can debug this if this ever happens. And one more thing that I want to do is as soon as the user taps on the save button, then we would like to disable the button. And the reason I want to add this button dot is enabled is equal to false. As soon as the user starts making the network request is because if the user spams the button, they would be attempting to create the same game multiple times, which doesn't make sense. So as soon as they hit the save button, we want to disable it so that no more saves are triggered. And if we get a failure, then we would like to enable the button again. So they can fix this issue and change the name of the game, and then they can try saving it one more time. And same thing down here, actually. If there was a failure for some unknown reason, like a network er error, then we'll allow them to retry by setting the button to be enabled again. Let's try that logic. So we already have a game that we just uploaded called test two. So let me grab some images. Let's call this test two and save it. And hopefully we should see an error saying name taken. Perfect. So we say name taken, a game already exists with this name, name two, please choose another. Okay. And now we have the save button enabled again, and we can try changing it to be test three. And now hopefully this should work. So you can see while the image upload is happening, the button is disabled. 
So the upload is complete, and now we can go back to Firestore, and now we have test three here with these four images that we uploaded. Great. The last thing I want to do in this segment is I'd like to give the user some visual indication of how much progress has been made in uploading these different images. Because this operation could take some time, especially if you have the hard version of the memory game. So you have 24 cards or 12 unique images. Uploading 12 images could take a while. And so it'll be nice to provide the user some feedback on how many Im images have been uploaded already. And this turns out to be fairly straightforward. We can open up Activity Create. And what I like to do is drag out a horizontal progress bar. Let's actually create some distance with the Save button. So I'm going to change this to be 150 dp from the bottom, just so we can create a bit more space. And now let's drag this out. And I want the Save button to be anchored to the top of the progress bar. So get rid of that constraint and have this be restricted to the top there. And then the progress bar should be match constraint for the width. And then we'll set the left constraint to be zero from the left end of the screen and also zero from the right end of the screen. Well, it shouldn't be zero dp. It should have some margin. So let's have maybe a margin of 16 from the left and right end of the screen. And also um, 16 dp from the bottom. Awesome, that looks good. So now, as soon as we hit the Save button, we want this progress bar to show up. And that will be the visual indicator to the user of how much how many of the images have been saved. The one thing here is that the progress bar should only show up when this upload is in progress. So initially, it should be not visible at all. And so for that, I'm going to go into the progress bar and change the visibility to gone. And the other way you can do this is if you tap on that progress bar element and just search for visibility, you can change it to gone right here. Cool, let's give this progress bar an ID of PB uploading. Copy the ID because we'll need that we'll need it for the create activity. So let's go over here and call it PB uploading and this is a progress bar. Alright, let's define that right here. Okay, so now we have the progress bar. As soon as the upload starts, then we want to set the progress bar to be visible. So where does that happen? Um, in Save Data Firebase, what we're doing here is checking if the game name is unique. So let's we're not going to set the progress bar to be visible here. But as soon as we start uploading images, that's when we want to set it equal to visible. So I'll say pbuploading.visibility is equal to view.visible. And here, if we encounter an error, then we want to set the visibility to be gone again, because we'll, we'll, we won't make any progress at this point, view.gone. And the interesting thing happens whenever we have successfully uploaded one image. So right here is a success case. We want to update the progress of the progress bar. So I'll say uploaded image URLs dot size divided by the total number of images that we need to upload. So for example, in the hard version of the memory game, we have 12 images to upload, and we might have uploaded maybe six of them so far. So that would be 50% progress. So this progress requires um, some integer, but the integer should be something between 0 and 100. And so right now, this will always be 0, because we're doing integer division, which will lead to truncation. So in order to get something between 0 and 100, we're just going to multiply by 100. Now, the only thing left to do is let's set the, prog the visibility of the progress bar to be gone when we're totally done with everything. So when we get to the success case of all images uploaded, and we've uploaded this to Firebase as well, right here, we can set the view to gone again. And actually, I think it makes sense to do this even before we check if the game creation task is successful or not. Because once we've gotten into here, we're no longer doing any network operation, so we should set the progress bar to be gone. Okay, let's try it. So in order to make it a little bit more visible, let's go back and choose the medium version of the game just to have more images to upload. And let's 
pick all six of these images. Now we have three more to pick. Let's pick the three over here. And then let's call this large test. Tap on save. Awesome, so we see a progress bar and you can see how it's slowly making progress to upload each of those nine images. So that's pretty cool. And then when we get the progress bar, it gets to the very end. Then shortly after that, once Firestore has informed us that it has successfully received the data, then we show this dialog upload complete. So tap on okay, and then we go back to the main activity. Just to confirm this one more time, now we do have in Firestore this large test and it will have nine images instead of four because that's how many images we were uploading. So now that we've, we're done with the creation flow in the main activity, that hack that we had earlier to automatically navigate there, let's remove that. After the creation activity is launched from here, then we're calling start activity for result. And so what we're gonna do in the next segment is figure out the result passed back from the create activity. And if it's successful and we have a new game created, we would like the user to play that custom game. The game is really coming together. We're pulling in these final pieces to make our memory app. I'm feeling pretty excited. If you're still with me, hit that like button and subscribe so you know when the next part comes out. Bye.